Entity Framework and Dapper are both very good tools. You should not compare the two against each other. They're kind of useful in different scenarios. I'm going to go through real quickly on how each one works and I'll let you decide which one's best for your project. Real quickly, I'm Chris from DataVids. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button so you get new videos and let's get started. So Dapper is simple. Um, all you have to do is go out to NuGet and get the latest version of Dapper and install it into your .NET Core project. Doesn't matter if it's a console project, web project. Um, if it's a mobile project, I recommend that you just put these database calls, of course, on your back end, your APIs. Um, so with Dapper, once you've installed that NuGet package and you put your using statement up top for using Dapper, then the next thing you're going to want to do is put a statement together, right? Uh, once you've got a select, I'm going to show you select, insert, update, delete, but really you just need to know that the insert, update, and delete are all going to use the same method, and the only other method is for select, which is going to be query. So there's query and execute. For query, you're going to go ahead and um, specify the model class type. In my case, it's customer. I'm using the Northwinds database from Microsoft. It's a free database. Um, shoot me a message if you want to know how to get it. It's really easy. Um, specify a SQL statement, and then it populates that model. Now, let me go over to that model because I want to tell you a little bit about that. With Dapper, if you were to generate all your models with some generation tool outside of Dapper, that's fine. However, if you have a join statement, you're going to need to create um, a custom model um, with the columns that you're pulling out of that SQL statement. Let's go ahead now and do an insert using execute. So if I wanted to do an insert, I'm going to use an example here, inserting into customers. Instead of doing query, I would do execute. And there's also query async and execute async if you're doing an async method. You won't need to specify a model, but you will need your SQL, and you're most likely going to have parameters if this is a insert statement or an update statement, which would both use execute, right? Um, now you could specify here a dictionary, or what I often do, which is really easy and quick, is I would do um, the parameters right in here. Customer name and you just specify new. Creates a little dynamic object for you here. Customer name equals, and then um, my customer, or some variable, right? And we'll specify that up here. And then, of course, it's not gonna be returning a list. And we need to close up or um, show that result there. And it's that simple. So you've got either execute or you've got query and you've got execute async and query async. And that's really all you have to know about Dapper. It's super easy to use. If you didn't have Dapper, you'd have this whole, um, if you're just using you know, SQL connection, you'd have this, this while loop where you'd be reading every single row, looking at each column, and, you know, that's, that's kind of the way we used to do things. Now that we have these um, micro ORMs like Dapper, you can do these really short statements here, and it handles it all for you. All right, now let's go into Entity Framework. I think you're going to find that you can do a lot more with Entity Framework, but if it's a, a small project or something that doesn't require that level of complexity, a lot of people choose Dapper. All right, let's go with Framework. So with Entity Framework, you've got to decide, do you want to generate your models from the database, or would you like to write code to generate database models? Um, that's for the models, and then as far as making the inserts and the selects, the updates, the deletes, all your SQL queries, those are going to be done using Link Queue. And, um, there is a context object that handles your session with Entity Framework, and so it's all quite easy to use. Um, and 
another great thing about it, it kind of forcing you to use link queue for those SQL statements in any framework is you can then design you know selection um, and filtering of your objects that are in the database and those objects that are not in the database with the same syntax because link queue works great for both all right so go over your package manager console and you may already have Entity Framework Core Tools installed, and if case, just skip this step. But to install dash package Microsoft Entity Framework Core dot tools, and it'll install pretty quickly. I'm going to show you the database first Entity Framework, which means we built the database first, and I have that Northwinds database, and we generate the models from it using Entity Framework, and then we go forward from there. So go to your package manager console. And you're going to want to make sure that you've got um, the SQL Server package installed for Entity Framework Core. Now I've already got it installed, so it's going to kind of skip this step, as you can see. All right. So now you're going to want to run the scaffold db context command, supply the connection string, let it know it's using a SQL Server driver or package, and then specify an output directory to put the generated C# -sharp files into. Um, I just specified models here and I'll put this in the comments as well of the video so you can copy and paste it should you want it. Alright, so as you can see it generated all these files here on the, in the Solution Explorer you can see them. Um, and most of them are just basic models. However, there is one file in particular to pay attention to and that is the DB context which is Northwind so the Northwind context C# -sharp file is going to show us all the information from the database as properties to specify the details of the columns and tables that it found. Um, but note that it won't have views or stored procedures in it. These are tables. So we can now query those tables, insert to them, um, and we're going to use this context class, Northwind context, to do that. So let's go back to our program CS and we'll create another method for this test. Private static um, void, we'll call this EF test. And we've got a Northwind context, we'll create an instance of that. So we'll be using the, using the context, uh, my context equals new. And here we can specify a table. So we'll do, you've got employees, contracts, those type of things in the Northwinds database. So if we wanted to add a new employee record, we could do dot add. Of course, you could do add range and add a whole bunch of them at once, which is another fun feature of Entity Framework. Um, so let's do new employee. So you just press space and it'll give you the IntelliSense. So address, one, two, three, minus street. City, Albuquerque, birth date, why don't we do date time dot now um, dot mm, uh, add days, um, and we'll send it back in time, 5,000 days, sounds like fun. Just check the Northwind database. There are two fields that are required to be not null. So in order to not get an error, we have to populate first name. Let's do Johnny and last name Smithy. And we need to save this object. Because all we've done so far is create an object. Let's save that object. So let's do my context dot save changes. There's also an async copy of that. And let's call our method. So EF test. And I'll go ahead and hit F5. So we said Johnny Smithy. So I'm going to go over to SQL Server now. And we'll select and see if it inserted that. And there it is, this row 10. 
Johnny Smith, you can see I didn't populate most of these fields, but it was that easy to insert it. Let's try pulling all these rows out now as a select statement using link queue. Alright, so pulling this data out in Visual Studio is really easy with Entity Framework. Let's remove our code to add and start pulling it out. So if you wanted to say get a list of all the employees, like we were saying, we can do um, list of type employee my list equal to my context, which already has um, the, the connection details, right? Uh, dot employees dot as list list of type employee. Now I've got a breakpoint set at the end. I'm going to hit play, and it, that's it. I mean, it's that simple. So if I hover over my list, you'll see there's ten of them, and it has the data in there. Um, one thing to note with the Entity Framework is it's called lazy loading, so depending on how you query the data out, it may not actually execute the statement to get it out of the context until you do something with it, like transfer it into a list or try to copy it into another object. So that's just something to keep in mind. You can also turn that, that feature uh, off. This is a good opportunity for us to show you something that's a little better in Entity Framework. So I mentioned earlier that you need to have those custom models if you're going to do a join statement using Dapper, unless you have some way of generating those models to where it looks at what your queries are so it can pick out certain columns from each table that's in that SQL statement that has joins in it. So if I do a join here in Link Queue, you'll notice that if I have a generic list or a generic object of some sort, it's going to figure all that out for us. So I have prepared for you a link queue that does exactly that. So if you take a look here, you've got employees joining against territories. We've got a where statement limiting it down to just employees with an ID of one. The most basic simple join statement where we take employees and territories that match, that both have the employee ID equal to each other. And if I run that, it's because of the lazy loading, it's not going to be put into a list right away. I'll show you. You won't be able to tell. You have to hit enumerate results. As you can see, I have to go to results view in order to see. And when you click that, it actually executes stuff that wouldn't in your code. So we'll do that. Um, my list three is equal to my list two dot two list. And now we're forcing it to be put into a real object. So if I look over my list 3 after running it, you'll see that I have the results there from both employees and territories. And it just populates the things that it needs. Pretty cool. So um, next I want to talk to you a little bit more about other things that Entity Framework have that Dapper doesn't which is it's just this monstrously powerful tool. So um, what a lot of people do is instead of generating the database first, which we just did, and then generating the models fr from that and then populating data and uh, changing data using the context, a lot of people go ahead and use the boilerplate, for example, in the web projects, and they do the identity. Um, and what that is is uh, Microsoft has boilerplate out there to allow you to log in and create login a login system so you don't have to worry about any of that. It integrates with Gmail, Facebook, all that kind of stuff and it, it actually will generate the database for you if you execute the scripts that it comes with. And if you guys are interested in that, let me know. I can create a video just on that. Uh, I've done it before. It's quite interesting. And then the only thing is, is if you generate the database from the code, if you change the models in the code, you have to create a database migration um, and then run that to update the database after you've made changes. Then you got to keep track of all these migrations, which can be a bit tedious, um, but it's not necessarily bad. So let me know if you want to see that. In this example, if we were to then change the database, we would have to regenerate the models. So, you know, there is kind of a little bit of extra work either way if you decide to change things. Um, but I find that creating the database sometimes is a little bit easier, but 
creating a new login system is a monstrous task in itself. So if you need a login system and you want to use identity, I would suggest doing the um, code first, not database first. Uh, well, hopefully this was helpful to you. I'm sure there's a ton more I could, you know, deep dive on here, but because there's, um, it's kind of a broad topic, I'd like some feedback from you first to see if there's any particular pieces of this that you'd like to learn more about. All right, well, have a great day. Talk to you later. Subscribe if you haven't. Bye.